Coming up on football tonight, the Benton Cardinals trying to pick up their third win of the season, hosting KC Central on the south side. Plus, while Savannah tries to start 4-0 for the first time since 2012, taking on Lafayette. And it's a city battle in eight-man football. Bishop of Blonde visiting St. Joseph Christian. All this and much more coming up on football tonight. Welcome into week four of football tonight. I'm Chris Roush, and I'm not going to say what Mitchell wanted me to, but here is Mitchell Riverall. He wanted me to say the one and only. I said it, but not because it was joyful for me. Oh, okay. Well, you know, week four. Yeah, week four. A lot of football. Already a month into the season. I can't believe it. It's already super fast. And we've got some teams across the area still undefeated trying to keep that going tonight. One team in here in town trying to get a winning streak going, aren't they? Yeah, we might as well start down on the south side. Benton Cardinals, South Fall, South Side Fall Festival, not the only thing going on South Side, St. Joe tonight. Also homecoming night for Benton as they host KC Central. Two and one Cardinals back home after defeating Lafayette in week three. And this one. Cameraman loses it, but picks it up. Benton gets in for the score. And then later in the first, Rich takes the snap, runs to his right, and does a Patrick Mahomes sidearm pass to Adrian Bird for a big gain. A couple plays later, Rich steps back, chucks the ball downfield to senior Denver Doman for another touchdown. And later on, Rich fakes a handoff and runs back. Boyd's defense throws down to Devin Hoffman, who breaks one and makes his way downfield, getting into the end zone. And this one was all bent to tonight, winning 63-0. Cardinals will be at home again next week as they host Savannah. Speaking of Savannah, up in Savannah we go tonight, the Savages Hosting Lafayette at MEC play. First Savannah drive, Ethan Duda dumps it off to Alex Hopper, gets a block, Judd's a tackler, and he's got some room down the sideline. Irish push him out of bounds right before the end zone, but Savannah still finds her way in. Cade Chappelle runs it in. Savannah goes up early in this one, eight nothing. Tough night for the Irish, but check out Savannah's Cooper Burnsides on this next play. Just takes the ball away, goes the other way. He's gone, touchdown for Savannah. Savage is scoring twice in the first three and a half minutes. Still in the first quarter. Savannah's next drive. Kate Chappelle, the 5'9", 188 running back, a one-man wrecking crew, just shrugging off would-be tackler, stiff arms. He's gone. Touchdown, Savannah again. The Savages defeat Lafayette tonight, 69 to nothing. Improved to 4-0 on the year. First 4-0 star for Savannah since 2012. Spoofhounds traveling to St. Pius tonight in this MEC clash. Zeros after first, but Spoofhounds open the scoring with a jet sweep to Drew Burns for the 7-0 lead. And after a Pius returns the ensuing kickoff, Spoofhounds back on the attack with this beauty of a throw from Derek Quinlan deep down the middle for Delton Davis, who is all alone. That's a touchdown, Maryville, 14-7. Spoofhounds, Coach Webb trying to keep his momentum up for this team. And Warriors, though, march down the field and punch it in here by Brady and McPhee to tie this game up at 14 apiece. And late second quarter, Quinlan finds Caden Steckline over the middle for a nice game. They set up this eight-yard touchdown strike. Quinlan to Burns for his second touchdown of the half. Spoof outs 20-14 at the break. But St. Pius goes on to win this one 34-27 over Maryville. Over in Chillicothe, the Cayman Dragons taking on the Hornets. Chile getting a big win tonight. They win this one 42-0. In Central, how about them getting a bounce back win? They defeat William Crispin 40-10. They're now 3-1 on the season. Don't go anywhere because we are just getting started. We still have a lot more to get to. Like the Bishop LeBlanc Golden Eagles facing off against the Lions from St. Joe Christian in an eight-man battle here in town. 
and the East Buchanan Bulldogs looking for a win over Lathrop. Highlights and much more when we turn on football tonight. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Mic check. Does that mean I have to be quiet this whole time? Welcome back to football tonight right here on KQ2. Chris Roush, Mitchell Riberall, and Mitchell. Now we go to the KCI Conference, and a couple of teams at the top of that one trying to, again, battle for a KCI Conference title. B. Buchanan, they haven't lost a regular season game since 2019. East Buchanan, they're looking to try to get that complete conference title this season. Yeah, and East Buchanan, we know we, they won the championship last year, so they're looking to repeat, but this conference is pretty tough, and I say we just go right over to Lathrop and start with the East Buchanan. The Mules hosting defending state champs East Buchanan Bulldogs. Second quarter, Bulldogs get a field goal here. They go up 19-0. Now East Buchanan's ball back, and Gage Busby drops back on third, and he goes deep to Aiden Hensley who makes a diving grab. Great catch, but it was called back by a holding call in the very next play. The Mules get the interception. They get taken down at the one yard line and then Lathrop on offense. Hands it off to Levi Smith, who powers his way in for the touchdown. East Buchanan leads 19 to seven at this point. Now Lathrop back on offense before the half. Can't get anywhere. Carson White there for the sack and East Buchanan fixes things at the break and the Bulldogs go on to win this one 33-7. East Buck gets their third win of the season. Over to Lawson we go. The Cardinals hosting Mid-Buchanan Dragons. Dragons trying to go 4-0. First offensive play for Mid-Buck. Xavier Rumbola with the keeper. He gets through the hole and he is untouched. He's off to the races, gets into the end zone. Mid-Buck goes up 7-0 with the PAT. Lawson's first drive. Not the way they want to start this off. Dragons force a fumble and Mid Buchanan takes over just like that. And guess who it is? A rumble up. Quarterback keeper once again. This time the whole offense pushing him in for the score. Lawson trying to get something going tonight. Cardinals, eh, go to the air a little bit. Drops back to pitch and catch. Trying to just get something going. But Mid Buck just rolls in this one tonight, getting a 35 0 shutout victory. Dragons now 4 0 on the year. Some other KCI scores around the area. West Platte beats Plattsburgh 48-0, and North Platte beats Hamilton in a nail-biter 25-24 in overtime. North Platte with their second win of the season. And some more scores around the area. Gallatin getting a 46-8 win over Polo today, and Trenton getting a win over Putnam County as well, winning that one 42-20. Beautiful night for football over in Maysville tonight. Wolverines taking on the Bulldogs. They up right after the half at the 
six as I will change fast. May as well get the pick to set up this beautiful throw and catch. Two point conversion is good after the pitch and catch for Mazel. It's right here. Joss back to the end zone. 14 6 Wolverines. Two point conversion good. Not much more will change on the scoreboard. Doesn't matter because the Wolverines defense holding strong. The kids loving it as well. They get to win tonight 27 6. Other GRC scores Milan defeats Princeton in this one 34 14. Milan improves to 2 2 on the season. And don't go anywhere because when we return, we jump on over to eight-man football where a battle in the GRC squares off with two unbeaten teams with Worth County and Albany. And also the Bishop of Long Golden Eagles facing off against the Lions from St. Joe Christian in eight-man football battle right here in town. All right, let's jump into the highlights. St. Joe Christian hosting Bishop LeBlanc, eight-man football, first quarter. Landon Gardner, the quarterback keeper, runs around the outside, cuts it back to the middle. Yeah, kind of getting wrapped up. He gets into the end zone for a touchdown. Eagles up 8 nothing. Gardner's night, it's not done. Eagles force turnover on down, get the ball back. Gardner launches Jake Correll, no one around him. Touchdown, Eagles up 16 nothing. Later, Eagles up 30 to nothing. Lions? Get something going in this one. Jacob Claybaugh hands off to Peyton Hausman. Gets around to the sideline, outrunning every defender. Gets into the end zone. Lions on the board, 30 to six. Less than a minute left in the first quarter in this one. Eagles back with the football. Gardner once again dropping back. Scrambles out to his left. One stiff arm and another gets a great block. And guess what? He's gone. A terrific night for him. More on him in just a minute. Touchdown, Golden Eagles. Bishop of Lawn defeats St. Joe Christian. 66 to 12. And here joining us out on set is the head coach of the Golden Eagles, Chuck Davis. Coach, congrats on the win. Thank you. Very good bounce back win for you guys. Definitely needed that one. What were you, I guess, kind of coming into this game? What are you kind of feeling like with what this team needs to do? After the last two weeks with two good physical teams, um, we had a good week of practice, kind of a nice reset into fundamentals, getting a little bit tougher. Um, I thought we came in and executed the game plan well, played a lot of younger guys tonight, and uh, came out with a win. And I know we can always touch on those last two weeks. I know those are tough opponents, but this week, Landon Gardner, I know we talked a little bit before you came on here. Could you talk about his performance? It's, uh, he, his stat line is something I've never heard before. I don't know the exact yardage yet. Uh, Why not? Haven't statted that one yet. <laughs> uh, 
I'd rather be here with you two fellas. Oh, uh, perfect. Uh, he was – he had five rushes for five rushing touchdowns. He was seven for seven with two touchdown passes. So, he did not get tackled tonight. Wow, that's – Impressive. Regardless, anyone who that is, that especially your quarterback. I mean, five rushing touchdowns. Yeah. All right. I mean, so let's go just a little bit back to the last two weeks. What were those two weeks like, and what did it teach you in this team? Hopefully, that's the caliber of team that we're going to see down the road. If we can make a run in the playoffs like we want to, um, we got out of that healthy, luckily for the most part, and it taught us that we're going to have to be a little bit tougher and play with a little more. Uh, you know, a little more lead up front at times. But with that knowledge and this momentum moving forward, hopefully we can take that to a, a good opponent next week. Is it good to have those games maybe early in the season where you want to go up against the best of the best because you have teams like the Worth Counties, like the North Andrews, you guys go up against them, kind of test where you guys are too because especially after the season you guys had last year? I think so. I think after last year we had a little bit of an inflated sense of self-worth at times and you know we thought we were a little bit better than maybe we are and the reality check of the previous two weeks was important for us to really get to work this past week. Where does this team go now from this point because obviously th this was a big one everybody knows what Landon Garner can do across eight-man football. Is, is there a way that teams can really slow him down that well because I mean even in the games you guys have lost he still finds a way to make plays too. Yeah, I think as we as he goes, we go at times, and I think at his best, he's really hard to stop. Um, you know, obviously, he has good numbers even in our losses, even when we only had 12 points against Worth County. Uh, his stat line always looks good. So he he's very unselfish when he plays. He likes to give other guys a chance to be successful, and he would rather win the game and have zero carries and zero passes if that's what it takes. So. Um, we're just going to keep plugging along, watching film, and doing the best we can. Bishop Blanc picking up a big win tonight, but you had brought us something. Maybe yeah, a little yeah. gift. Yeah. Well, Mrs. What? Davis's plants were such a hit last time that she wanted me to bring you one of your own. That is awesome. I like it. Yes. Let's move it just a little bit. There we go. There we go. Now we can see it. We're going to water it probably too much. Okay. And, and it requires very little sunlight. And if Mitchell's gone a week, we have the replacement. Yeah, I think I could keep it alive. I so we'll, we'll see how it looks. I think you can. Weeks. I believe in you. We're just going to have a weekly segment where we just water the plant after, you know, a highlight or something. Yeah. I'll make sure she lets you know the care options for you. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you, Coach, for coming on tonight. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. All right, let's continue on, Mitchell. Wild card action on homecoming, pulling every single one out of the deck. The handoff there, touchdown. And that's 8-0. And doesn't stop on defense either. Pick six right here. No, actually, good tackle there. And then a little bit later on defense, drops back, and there it is, Stewartsville pick six. He's gone to the races, breaks the tackle, no one catching up there. And Thunder making it interesting here though, a couple screen plays. And you know what, Stewartsville just celebrating that win, but a couple plays here, nice screen. Chris's favorite play of football right there, and that goes pretty far. Gets tackled inside the 20, and then a sneak later and it's a one-score game. But you know what, Stewartsville, just too much. Braxton Gibson and company and the Wildcards go on to win this one, 70 to 30. All right, Platte Valley hosting South Holt tonight in conference play. First quarter we go in this one. Platte Valley marching down the field for the first score of the night. Aiden Blackford hands off to Carter Luke, gets to the outside. Touchdown, two-point conversion, no good. Six will do, then a little bit later, in this ball game, Johnny Soka's team kind of in control this one. They go instead with the fullback, Jackson McCrary, makes this one a 20 to nothing ball game in Platte Valley. Really good team again this year. They improved to 4-0 now on the year with a 46-6 victory. Some more games in the 275, Nottoway Valley and Rockport. This one ends up with Rockport getting the victory over Nottoway Valley and then East Atchison with a 72 nothing win over the cap. We've got more to come on football tonight. We stay in eight-man football, so keep smiling. You're fine. Yes, I love it. And we head up to Albany for a top 10 showdown in eight-man football. Highlights coming up next on Football Tonight.
Welcome back to Football Tonight. Chris Roush, Mitchell Ribrall, our new plant. I don't know if yes. you can see it that well. Yeah, you can. It's you can see it there. pretty well. Yeah, yeah our, our new friend. We haven't named it yet, but we'll get there. Yeah. Well, back to football. No one wants to hear us talk about a plant. Yeah. Well, unless it replaces you. I, I say we continue in eight man. Yeah, you go ahead. Because I like eight man, and I think we start with a top ten matchup. Two Grand River Conference teams trying to move to four zero. Problem is, they're facing each other up in Albany. Warriors hosting Worth County in a top. And showdown number two versus number six. Early first, Albany Kemper Klein rolls to his right, finds Kyle Burke in the end zone, touchdown Albany. But the Tigers strike back with a touchdown of their own. It's a back and forth battle early. Albany running the flea flicker, Klein to Burke again for six. I love the flea flicker, great trick play. Warriors outlasting Worth County today, 36 to 34. Other games in the area, Stanbury visiting Knox County tonight getting a 7-38 game. That game is now final. And then tomorrow, King City hosting Pattonsburg at 5 o'clock in a Grand River Conference game. And to help us break down tonight's games is our 8-man football analyst, Devin Albertson, who made it home safely. That's good. Devin, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, Devin, your game, uh, you had South Holt and Platte Valley. We'll start with that one. There's another one we, another one we need to get into as well. But Platte Valley, 4-0 now on the season. Yeah, they they're really good. I mean, they went to work tonight, just kind of everyone did their one-eighth kind of deal thing there. Everyone I talked after the game was like, hey, we just kind of did our spot. This is what we're supposed to do. Carl Luke, still good at football. Dex McCrary, Trevor Weir, Aiden Blackford and company. They're really good. They have a big test next week versus Albany, though, so we'll see how they look next week. And you know, Devin, we've talked quite a bit this week. I know we're obviously to the podcast, but Worth County Albany was a big game that we both had marked on our schedule. So, what do you think of this one and just overall thoughts? Yeah, so I was following Anthony Crane there on Twitter. He was giving great updates throughout the game there for us in great man football and just kind of back and forth. Two really good teams throwing haymakers at each other. And as good as Tyler New was for Worth County, those weapons, uh, Kemper Klein's the real deal at Albany. And Coach Fountain is a really good coach over there at Albany. He finally has the Jimmies and Joes to go along with his X's and O's, and they're going to be really good this year and I can't wait to see what they're going to do next week versus Platte Valley and they might make some noise there in District 4 and the GRC now after upsetting Worth County this week. Devin I know we've talked about this before too but is, is this Albany's year at this point because they've been for the last several years the best team under 500 because they've ran into Stanbury they've ran into Worth County they've ran into North Andrew now they're the team that's knocked off some of the top guys from the last couple of seasons. Yeah absolutely a big win over Stanbury week two they kind of made their arrival into the top